Today, we'll discuss inverse functions, word problems, or the applications of, word, of inverse functions on word problems. So, take note that when we say inverse, uh, if we have two variables of x and y, such that we have y is equal to an expression in terms of x, the inverse of this is just solving for x in terms of y. So, it's just a reverse from y equals in terms of x, we will reverse that one. It should be from x equals expression in terms of y. Now, this concept of inverse is very useful in formula transformation. So, say for example, a painter charges a flat fee of $50 plus $25 per hour for his services. So, therefore, the function is given by this where m of h as our function, this is a function for money, that's why it's letter m, for money. This is equal to 25 times h because it's $25 per hour plus $50. So this is a function of money. Okay, so the charge that the painter will get for his services or for his service. Okay, so this is our function. Now, let's go first to the uh, inverse of a function. So let's get the inverse of this one. So what is the inverse of this function? So the inverse of a function following our steps, we have number one, we can let this one as y. So y is equal to 25h plus 50. Next is to interchange the roles of the two variables. Our two variables here are y and h. So let's interchange their roles. So this will become h. So y will become h and h will become y. So we have h is equal to 25y plus 50. And then step 3 is to solve for y in terms of the other variable which is h. So let's solve. So we have this. So, we can transpose 50 to the other side. So, from positive 50, it will become negative 50. So, we have h minus 50. And then next, which is equal to 25y. And then dividing both sides by 25. So, divide both sides by 25. We have h minus 50 over, all over 25. And of course, the last step is to replace this one by m inverse of h okay m inverse of h now take note that our original domain and range for our money function it's from hour or time equals here for the range is the amount or the money okay now for the reverse so the m inverse, take note that our domain now, our domain now is this one, the money. Okay, the money and our range now is the hour. So don't get confused. So meaning if we use this formula, this one as the inverse. So here, our h now, since this is our domain, this is our input in this case. So our domain now is the money so h will become our money take note here at number two we interchange their roles okay the money or y becomes the hour and the hour becomes the money okay this m okay so that is why our h here is the money okay it is not our anymore okay so the answer for this one if you use this as your solution is in terms of hour or time now sometimes it's very confusing okay but but let's compare this one to the formula transformation because as what, as what i've said it's very useful in formula transformation and it's more understandable of course now look at this now okay so let's just say that this is m let's remove that uh of h so let m be this Function. So then m is equal to 25h plus 50. 
And then solving for h, just like what we did in the first part, okay, so the reverse, take note that uh, inverse is just the reverse. So we now solve for h. So transpose 50, so it will become negative 50, and divide both sides by 25. Okay, so now, if you notice a formula transformation, it is more clear that we are solving for the number of hours okay because we're solving for h and our variable here is m for the money and of course by analysis these two are just the same okay it's just that our notation is very confusing at this part because this is h okay we can always say that ah sir that's h that's hour that's time okay but take note in the inverse this is inverse, the domain and the range will get reversed. Okay, domain and the range. If this is hour and this is money, for your domain and range, for the reverse, it should be the other way around. So this will become the money and this will become the, the answer here is the hour. So just like this. So in formula transformation, I think it's more understandable because of the notation. Okay, now let's go to the other example. What is the inverse function of this? So this is actually the conversion from degree Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay, take note to Fahrenheit. So this is in terms of C. So the, uh, the formula is just a function of C. Okay, because this is in terms of C. So the function is given by F of C is equal to 1.8 times C plus 32. Now, using our uh, process for the fi for finding the inverse function, we have this. Number one, of course, we'll replace this one by y. And then interchange their roles. So we have c is equal to 1.8y plus 32. And then solve for y in terms of c. So transpose positive 32. So it will become negative 32. And then divide both sides by 1.8. Okay, last is of course we need to replace y by the inverse. So this will become f inverse of c. Okay, f inverse of c. And take note by analysis again, if we analyze our input for the function is the degree Celsius. Okay, this is the degree Celsius. And our output is the degree Fahrenheit. Okay, the degree Fahrenheit. Now, for the reverse, f of c, f of negative 1c, so the reverse or the inverse, take note, this will become our domain. So, meaning, this notation here, this c, will be our Fahrenheit. Right? This will be our Fahrenheit. So, in the computation, this will be our Fahrenheit. Okay? And of course, the result of this, the result of this, since we are in the reverse, the, re the result of this is in terms of Celsius, or the unit is Celsius. So, again, it's very confusing for you, maybe, because of the symbols. But if we look at the formula transformation, so let's have this, F is equal to F of C, then, by just solving uh, C in terms of F, we have this. So, transpose positive 32, it will become negative 32. And then, divide both sides by 1.8. So, therefore, this is the reverse formula of the given. So, take note here, we are solving for the degree Celsius. So, it's very clear that we are solving for the degree Celsius. Here, you just need to analyze first because it's the reverse, or it's the inverse. And after you understand the process of inverse, you will notice that we are also solving the reverse here, the Celsius. Okay, the Celsius. So both of these are the same. Next, the formula S is equal to 180 times the quantity N minus 2 gives the sum of the measures of the angle of N-sided polygon where n is the input and s is the output. Okay, so n is the input and s is the 
output. So this is our function. So meaning this is s of n. Our output is s of n. So what is the inverse of s? So meaning the reverse. Okay, so first let's apply our steps. So we have let y be our s. So this is our, we will replace this by y. And then interchange the rows of the two variables, n and y. This will become n is equal to 180 times y minus 2. And then next, we divide both sides by 180 so that we can cancel 180. And then next, we have, so we have this. So we transpose negative 2. So it will become positive 2. Okay, and last, of course, we need to replace this by the inverse of the given function. So this is the, our function. So the inverse is S inverse of N. Okay, again, by analysis, this is N, the number of angle, and this one is the sum. But for the reverse, okay, for the reverse, since we have N here, this will become this will become the sum, okay? Because their their uh, roles are interchanged in number two, okay? So this will become the sum, okay? So again, maybe you're confused because of the notation. Now the concept why it becomes the sum because of the reverse or the inverse, okay? So we start our domain started from this one. Okay, so for the formula transformation, we have here, so divide both sides by 180 so that we can cancel this. Then we have this, n minus 2 on the right side, and then transpose. Okay, so this is the formula transformation. Okay, so this is the formula in finding the sum of the angles, but this is the formula in finding the number of angles. So these two, again, are the same okay these two are the same so you just need to analyze for the inverse process okay letter b what is the polygon that has a sum of the measures of angles of 540 so for the inverse function again since this is a reverse n will become our sum okay n will become our sum because it's a reverse so the input now is this one. This is now the input. So this is the 540 degrees is here. Okay, so 540 degrees. So that's why we have x 540. So n will become 540 plus uh, all over 180 plus 2. So we have 3 plus 2 or 5. So it's a 5-sided polygon. So it's a pentagon. Okay, so if we use the formula transformation, so we got this a while ago. So S is 540 divided by 180 plus 2. So 3 plus 2 is 5. So it's again a pentagon. And okay, and we're done with our example. So meaning all you have to analyze for the inverse function. Okay, for the inverse function. Their roles are interchange. So if this is the domain and this is the range, for the F inverse, this will become the domain and this will become the range. Okay, thank you for listening.